Shall we uh, get going? Sounds good. Uh, all right. Where's your hair? Lost it somewhere on the way to work. Whoa. I'm on a three year haircut cycle. So <laughs> this is the year of awesome bike commutes. Whoa, big change. Is this wow. like, do you, do you, do you cut it off like this often? Or is this like a bit, it was like a big, like every, every two to three years. Yeah. No way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So I, I must have met you right, right at, after ahead. the last, the last cutoff. I literally considered putting on the agenda because I'm like, at some point they're going to notice that it's going to come up. So I could be like, Hey, Alyssa's shorn. Did you, uh, did you do it yourself? Uh, right. First time I always have it done by a hairdresser because going from super long to short, otherwise it ends up like super uneven stubbly. And then I make yeah. it. Wow. Crazy. All right. Uh, cool. All right. It looks like uh, Josh is first on the agenda. Is he, is he here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to see if uh, anybody was signing up for canarying the new buffers because it would be great to just turn them on and yeah, the old stuff. I can I can give that a whirl at Lyft, but it would be nice if a couple people could could do it. I actually wonder, could we just open an issue to actually track like getting people to test the new implementation? The other thing is, I thought we planned on doing thorough fuzzing of it first. I don't know if we did. Like, and we did that. Okay, cool. I just yeah, like, it's 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 getting fuzz now, cool. uh, and I, Harvey's not here to speak to it. But I actually think that we've been finding more issues in lib event than we have in the new implementation. Um, cool. So I, I think that's why people want to switch over so we can avoid that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I think what I would suggest doing is maybe. Um, if we could just just open an issue and then people can just ping back. Like maybe we could just get a couple of users to actually test. Okay, I'll open the issue. Okay. Yeah, and I can hopefully do that in the next week, week or week and a half. I can do a small little test there. Um, okay. Uh, and just quick announcement: we posted the EnvoyCon CFP, so that'll be uh co-located with kubecon in san diego uh november 18th is the date uh so look forward to everyone's proposals feel free to reach out uh if you need any help uh any questions about that no Okay, next, let's see. This morning, uh, we announced Envoy Mobile, which is our new uh, project to run Envoy on iOS and Android. Uh, check it out and uh, would love to chat with anyone who is interested. All right, there's that. Um, I was just thinking, Lizanne, that we could, I mean, just there's so much going on with like Azure pipelines and Circle CI and our RBE and all of that. M maybe could you just give just a little status update of what's going on? Uh, sure. So, well, the first thing is I think the Bazel point twenty seven churn happened yesterday. I think I fixed that um, all all of the issues right now, uh, except the one. That doesn't run CentOS seven or like Ubuntu fourteen or four. Um, uh, for RBE, I think it's almost ready to um run that um uh submit the PR for that. Um, Azure pipeline. So Azure pipeline has basically dependent depends on the RBE what's going on with RBE because it doesn't provision large instance at this moment. Um. So basically, it depends on how RB goes. Otherwise, I cannot migrate to Azure from uh, more on. Uh, Mac OS is now fully running on Mac OS. I think that saves CNCF money. Um, I'm pinging Chris to increase the parallel build for Azure pipeline. So that's the status for now. Sorry, and, and just because I'm, I'm, this is very confusing for, for me at uh -huh. least. Um, 
the the issue with RBE is around permissions, right? Like it, it's around credentials. Is that yeah? Is that yeah. correct? And Azure Pipeline doesn't have that issue uh, at this moment. Um, so it can have different sets of the credentials for PR and for master run, and for so basically for different sets you can have different sets of permissions. Other than Circle CI is like you only have this or expose that to PR or not. Okay, so we yeah. so we feel though that we need to move to Azure Pipelines to do RBE, is that is that correct? Um, if we want to do RBE with PRs and everything, then that will be on Azure Pipeline. Okay. Uh, on your master, it's fine to do either way. Okay, and, but you don't, you don't, are, are you blocked on anything right now or, or you feel like you generally have what you need? I have what I need. I'm just too busy to make some progress on them. Yeah. And, and like the one thing that I'm still a little confused about is just can, could we use repo kid A to do some of this? So like maybe we need to talk about that off offline. Right. I think the API required for Rebo KDA, I'm not sure it's uh, enough for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Uh, um, but I think in general, Azure Python have more flexibility. I'm, we, we probably might all want to revisit what is really required from Rebo KDA once uh, if we go with Azure Python, since some of them is to fit in the gap right uh, with the circle ci um api and what we want right and i, I mean one thing and again we, we don't have to dig into it deep here but i wonder if we made we made the bot a little more stateful and that might mm -hmm. that might be something that it won't do but we could pay a contractor to, to mm -hmm. do that like if that would help somehow mm -hmm. yeah all right uh cool I guess, does anyone have any questions out there about CI? Uh, just uh, Michael Payne here, just to comment on uh, building Bazel 027. So bootstrapping off 0 0.26, this is on RHEL 7. Um, mm -hmm. Bootstrapping off 0 0.26, I was able to build from source using the tip in the GitHub repo, mm -hmm. with one of the, the flags for, for Bazel. So I do have 0 0.27 running on RHEL 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, well, that that works. I think they're working on like rebuild the release artifacts on CentOS yeah. Server as well. So I saw that. Yeah, yeah, my my strong hope is that they're gonna fix both Trusty and Rel Seven um, with a with a new release. Uh, yeah. Because I mean, I understand that Trusty is an end of life, but there's paid support through 2022, um, mm -hmm. so it, it's pretty painful if they if they turn that off. Right. Yeah, I think CentOS and Rail is the one they want to support. So I hope point twenty seven point one will be released out soon. Yeah, yeah, and I I think if they support Rail seven, it should fix Trusty also. That's my yeah. suspicion. Yeah, that's my uh, understand too. Since the GDBC and standard C plus plus is all their own Rail. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, all right. I don't think I have anything else. Anyone else have any other stuff that they want to uh, discuss? Uh, okay. Hey, w uh, one thing, Alyssa, is I'm wondering if in two weeks, could we maybe have the quick folks come to the meeting and maybe we could do like a quick update? Uh, sure. I will check uh, to make sure they're available. And if not, I'll, you know. Yeah, or we can, I mean, it doesn't have to be in two weeks, but yeah. I was just thinking that there's been a ton of development and it would be useful to sync up on, on what's going on. And we can talk about, uh, I'm going to start working on that doc that we had talked about, about doing the L4 uh, quick hashing proxy. So it would be nice may maybe just to talk about where, where we're at and timelines and stuff like that, because I, I think there's quite a few people who are interested. Cool. Also, actually, do you want to call it the forward proxy stuff while we're talking about exciting? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did a initial 
uh, PR for dynamic forward proxy. So that allows Envoy to be used as a generic HTTP proxy without prior DNS knowledge. Uh, very highly requested feature. Obviously, this is alpha status. There's still a lot of a lot of work to do, um, but would love people to check out the PR and the docs. And there's a bunch of to dos on stuff that we can do to make it better. Uh, but I'll, I'll be iterating on that over the next couple of weeks. So would love to get folks feedback on that. Yeah, I'm halfway through reviewing it. I'm also tagging the person on our team who's in charge of forward proxies and the person on our team who just transferred in who's been doing forward proxies for Great. Like, yeah. uh, five years. So just for yeah. like general ideas of how to structure it. Yeah, that. yeah that, that, that would be uh, fantastic to get, to get more eyes on it. I mean, there's quite a few things that I know need to be implemented. So mm -hmm. once we get the initial review done, um, you know, I'll, I'll be listing out various things that, that we need to do. The, the biggest one that was already called out is that <clears throat> right now today, because we inherit all of the TLS parameters from the cluster, yep. there, there's, no, there's no good way to say that, you know, I want to do SNI, right, for the host that I'm proxying to, or I want to do cert verification of the host that I'm proxying to based on host name. Um, I'm, I'm positive that I can fix that. Like we can have a TLS contacts per, per logical host. Um, but, but again, it would be nice just to get people think of different things. So it'd be yeah, great so to have people go through the code and just list out all the things that are missing. A similar thought on, on features that we're wanting from different levels of code, which is that I know for us, we're going to want to have, uh, eventually an envoy, like order of six months handle, um, supporting kind of multiple connections to a given upstream, you know, just for scalability and the balancing yeah. reasons. And then I was like, well, if we do all that work, like over here, like how are we going to jam that into, we're going to need that before proxy too. Um, you know, just thinking about like at what layer we want to handle grouping. Yeah. And well, so, so the for proxy code today, because it runs through the con pool code will support multiple connections. Um, so that actually already works. Oh, okay. So you, you, you would, you would do it in the connection pool and one connection. Pool yeah. Pool. So it, so oh. the way that the code was implemented today is that it works very much like logical DNS. So mm -hmm. it returns one logical host and then the connection pool will make as many connections as it would, it would already make. Cool. Okay. Um, me meaning that if we eventually did the work that we've talked about for years of making the HTTP two connection, pool, that'll get repurposed for free. Yeah, so that was it will. I was started spelunking and I was like, Oh my gosh, I like, I spent an hour looking at the code because I hadn't looked at that code. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, it would. So so like if we made the HTTP2 connection pool support multiple connections, it, it would just work. Pick it up. Which Sweet. is nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. So thank you for people that have looked at it already. Please uh, drop comments. I'll be uh, updating that PR and, and future to-do work. Yeah. I will take another look today. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. All thank right. you so much. Um, okay. Let's see. Anything else? Cool. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Hi. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.